I'm Johnny Masker and welcome to my channel. On tonight's show, Black Lives Matter, No Other Lives Matter, Political Correctness, Star Wars and the Woke Mob and more. You have to excuse my space looking like a fucking dump, but I just can't be fucked to clean it up and I'm knackered. So just a random rambling show for you today. I'm going to go through some news. Black Lives Matter, we keep talking about this. I'm really getting sick of this. I don't want to talk about this shit anymore. I just want to talk about Star Wars and video games and music and and hot women That's and foods. That's all I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about this whiny shit. But I will anyways because I just got to do it. Right, so have you seen this news? Come over to my screen. The Sun says, Deadly discussion. Young mum 24 shot dead after telling Black Lives Matter protesters all lives matter during argument about mo movement. A young mum was shot dead in Indianapolis in front of her fiancé after an argument about the Black Lives Matter movement. Jessica Doty Whitaker was walking with her partner, Jose Ramirez and two friends at 3 a.m. on July the 5th when they came across four men and a woman and an argument broke out. The groups clashed over language and the Black Lives Matter movement. I'll never probably ever get that image out of my head of what happened, Ramirez told the local news station. According to Ramirez, the groups got into a racially charged argument and one man pulled out a gun and so Ramirez did too. One article published by the Daily Wire conservative website reported that Doty Whitaker had said all lives matter to the group who allegedly were supporters of the BLM movement. The Daily Wire spoke to Mr. Doty, Doty Whitaker's father, to confirm, the article reads. Yes, that is accurate, Doty said when asked if his daughter said all lives matter during the argument about Black Lives Matter. So, apparently, a woman got shot for saying all lives matter. Now, I saw this news somewhere else and I waited a little bit to report it. Now it's come up in the sun and it looks like Daily Wire have actually done some due diligence and spoken to the, the partner of the woman who was shot over this. There hasn't been any trial, so we don't actually know really what has happened in a court of law. For all we know, the guy who is the partner of this deceased woman this apparently murdered woman, maybe he is a racist and maybe he just wants to exploit his dead girlfriend to fan the flames of this conflict and make black people look bad. We don't know. But maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe some people killed his girlfriend for saying all lives matter. Why am I bringing this up? Well, because I think we're getting too obsessed with the semantics an etymology of phrases and words and it's just getting silly and nonsensical now it, it doesn't even make sense having to justify that black lives matter we know that black lives matter all lives matter but then if you say all lives matter that's bad according to black lives matter and if you say black lives matter that's bad according to anyone else all lives matter and it just seems that things are getting really tribal right now and it's almost as if we've lost sight of why we're all so angry in the first place. This is really pissing me off and I, I'll tell you another thing that pisses me off is when people get attacked for saying all lives matter. It's actually really upsetting and a friend of mine told me that his friend said all lives matter is bullshit because white people can't be racist because of the structural racism and stuff like that in the system. And before this, I knew this woman was shot. I heard about that story. And then I said to my mate, well, if we actually start thinking like that, that certain races or people with a certain skin color, what they say is of less value than other people, then that really isn't that much different from how Hitler would say, well, what Jews said counts for less than what Aryan German said. It's exactly the same logic and that stuff kind of freaks me out. And then woven into all of this is more language games. For example, if you say something like all lives matter, not only will you be denounced by a lot of Black Lives Matter and the woke mob, we'll get to the wokeness in a minute, 
but you'll be called things like racist or whatever, whatever, whatever it may be, some, some derogatory slur to try and ruin your life. And it, I kind of, something just clicked in my head when I was philosophizing over why this is all happening with this woke shit. And I could only come to the conclusion that all this is, is a case of you're wrong and I'm right on steroids. That's all it is. That's what all this woke shit has become. All you have to do is say, you're a racist, and that means you're wrong and I'm right. That is the most basic way to win an argument with no reasoning, no logic, and no facts. All you have to do is say, boom, magic word, and then the other person will be silenced. And that's why I think being woke is so attractive because, wow, imagine giving someone that power. You click your fingers and then anyone has to shut up. You don't think people are going to abuse that? I blame the media for all this stuff. They validate this kind of behavior and don't ridicule it and it gives people power. And also the system is set up against it. You can be done for hate speech or you can be done for criticizing science. You can be done for saying that men cannot change their biological sex, things like this. You can get in trouble for that shit. And no wonder, therefore, people will call you a sexist or a transphobe or a homophobe or a racist or whatever if you can be shut down that easily, aided and abetted by the media and the, the left-wing world at the moment. So this is all really pissing me off. And because of that, because of this wokeness and this, this whole tribalism thing and this whole heated political fight that's going on right now, I haven't even looked at what the Twitter response for this is because I know what it's going to be. So the people on the left are going to say, that's not what happened. That's bullshit. The Daily Wire is a hardcore conservative website. It's a lie. They never said all lives matter. Then there'll be people saying, giving some stats and saying, well, look, one white person's died. What about this many black people? And it doesn't matter what they're saying. They just want to be right. Like I said, this is what it's going to come down to. So you're going to have loads of people on Twitter saying, trying to somehow justify this killing, somehow justifying it. And then you're going to have loads of people on the right condemning Black Lives Matter, and then everyone's just going to be fighting. Do you know what? Let's fuck it. Let me put it into Twitter right now, because I know that it doesn't matter what people are saying. People are going to defend this before having even seen the evidence. And the ironic thing is, with the whole George Floyd thing, still no one's seen the evidence, and the guy is a... Re is is a racist, the cop is, has been condemned as a racist. I'm not defending him for his actions, but we need to, there has been literally no evidence to suggest that he was a racist yet. As far as I, I know, I, you know, in the, in, up until two or three days ago since I read the news. And yet, the whole of America has descended into riots based on a supposed racial attack when there's no evidence yet. And in this case, there's actually more evidence than the George Floyd case. There's, there was no N-word used in the George, George Floyd case and there was no racial slur or derogatory terms used in the George Floyd case. And yet, that's almost... The people and the media have already branded it as a racial attack. Whereas in this case, you're actually having quotes in the articles in The Sun and some other source where it came from. And you're actually getting a quote from the boyfriend or the partner of the woman who was killed backing it up and yet on Twitter you're going to see people saying that it's there's no way it can possibly be racist so isn't that if that's the case then I think it's fair to say that social media it has a ridiculous left-leaning bent wouldn't you so what are we searching for what's this woman's name don't forget this woman's name because she has been killed and that is very sad let, let, let's just type in all lives matter and let's see what happens, what comes up. Twitter reads like a left-wing publication. So that's what I'm expecting. I just searched all lives Twitter because I'm trying to multitask. All lives matter. All right. Here we go. Okay. Black Lives Matter mural painted over to read All Lives Matter. That's on Breitbart. Fucking up, man. This is, where is this going? We're just going to pit whites against blacks? Is All Lives Matter what white people say in Black Lives Matter? This is, this is getting so stupid. Why are we... The media are just whipping 
people into a frenzy and creating a race war in order to get rid of Donald Trump. It is really, really sick. Okay, so we've got a guy saying, so let's go through some examples. You say someone got fired for saying all lives matter. Who? I know about the false reports and harassment cases. CEOs berating people with racist rants. Should they keep their positions as head of a company? Okay. What else is going on? Charlie A, enough with this Black Life Matters bullshit. It's sending the wrong message to children, cities, towns. They all need to stop allowing them to paint in our streets. All lives matter. We need to stop bowing down to these criminals. Black Lives Matters is racist. Things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, so as I said, people on the right attacking Black Lives Matter. Now, let's see what else is going on. It was brilliant and so powerful. We cannot say all lives matter until black lives matter. So basically that woman getting shot doesn't matter yet. So then we've got a trans person. The left want to bulk in women, black people, minorities, trans into one easily manageable voting block they can manipulate so they all seem to band together on twitter so christy who has a rainbow flag in her profile says hey if you're so adamant about all lives matter if you, if you really think that all lives matter you shouldn't share bull crap like this all lives don't matter if you don't support black ones but that's that's a straw man who is saying that black lives don't matter by saying that white people shouldn't be killed this is like i said this is exactly what's going on, on twitter i don't even need to look at it Everyone's just shouting into the air, into the ether, and there's no dialogue. You can't see anyone's body language. It's just these kind of statements being thrown around half the time anonymously. There's no nuance to any of it. And people just want to say what they want to say. They don't actually want to have a dialogue. And this is kind of being used as a snapshot of what society is really like. And while some of it might be like that, I have a bit more faith in humanity. I don't think things are as black and white as all that. And where am I going with this? I just wanted to show you that news. So let's just, you know, stay tuned to it. And let's not just become obsessed with the with the kind of small semantics of words and stuff. Underneath this, there are basic moral principles I think we should all be able to agree on. Nobody should be getting shot. Nobody should be getting killed. Nobody should excuse that stuff. So I wanted to share that with you. And then I was having a chat with my mate about it who is a very good friend of mine, actually, if you're watching, hello. And um, he said, yeah, I read this news earlier today. This is really crazy, but for some reason, I don't see it as a top story on BBC, CNN or HuffPost. Let's see if he's right. I'm going to go to CNN.com. White House takes aim at Fauci. As the pandemic rages, the Trump administration appears to be actively trying to discredit the disease expert who publicly disagreed with the US president. Okay, so orange man bad over at CNN. Okay, so yeah, there's no mention of that at all. Let's go to BBC, supposedly an impartial website that's actually incredibly left-leaning. BBC News. Is there any mention of this white woman being killed, presumably... By someone involved in Black Lives Matter. No. Nothing on the front page. God, my friend is right. Well, this is kind of weird, isn't it? My friend said, the next time a black person gets shot after attacking someone, you better believe that will make the headlines and riots will ensue. So, okay. And... He says, I'm telling you, man, those in power are intentionally trying to divide us along racial lines right now. I actually think the West was doing a fantastic job at tackling racism, the best in history, but the media likes to stoke the flames of hatred and create hatred. And I think it's true because, look, nobody hates anyone. I don't hate anybody. Most normal, the majority of people living in America are not hateful, nasty people, right? Come on, like how often do you encounter someone that's truly, truly horrible? They're a minority. And we're being led to believe, I just think we're being taken advantage of by the media and everyone's falling for it. So here was my response. Let's see. So we started talking about 
systemic racism and stuff like that. And let me tell you what I said. I made a parallel with the atomic bomb, which you should probably hear about. So I said, uh, let's have a look. Japan got on with shit after the atomic bomb. Sadly, slavery was the cultural atomic bomb. But at some point somewhere, a world leader will pioneer some new form of evil. If Japan blamed America for all their woes, would they have recovered so strongly? If they still held a grudge, would they be more successful than today? You know the answer to this. So I'm comparing slavery to the atomic bomb and looking at the progress of Japan in comparison to the progress of black people in America. And my friend said, this is an excellent point, which I frankly hadn't even really considered. I've never even seen Japan play the victim and act like they're failing stem from the atomic bombs. I said, people need to look at that. The Japanese famously don't look for outside help. And look how well they did. Talk about institutional racism. American culture literally was forcefully injected into Japan after World War II. There are US bases all over Japan. Talk about colonialism. And even then, it doesn't affect Japanese people at all. I guess you could argue Americans aren't the bosses of companies who hire Japanese. So you can't make those comparisons about systemic racism. So it's different. Still, the point is, even the American shit in Japan can't dent the real true Japanese culture, no matter how many Disneylands or bases they plant. It's intact. And the Japanese continue not only as if it's almost not there, but harness and adapt it into their own culture and make new stuff with it. Still, the whole Japanese political, military, and even founding religious system was literally, systematically, and structurally rigged by America in a provable, tangible way that makes the suggestion America's system is structurally flawed in terms of racial bias seem ridiculous by comparison. And it didn't do fuck all to the Japanese economy in the end. Actually, it supercharged it. Not excusing it, I actually don't support the atomic bomb happening, even though if it hadn't happened, someone else would have used it at some point. And it might have been against the West. And then I said, okay, so whites colonized the world, found America and made America into a free market in the end. A market anyone can participate in to levels where illegal immigrants are encouraged to break in and claim benefits, which is true in America by the hard left, which is becoming mainstream left. And this is the evil system holding blacks back. It's a system incomparable to any other. No other country is as benevolent or has those kind of values, values we all share regarding generosity and humanity that ironically are being claimed exclusively by the left. So everyone's saying how systemic and terrible it is. But really, there isn't a country out there where so many people are actually kind of morally on the same page. There are countries where slavery is actually going on right now. China is enslaving Muslims and trying to reprogram them and brainwash them. Go and look it up. It's awful. There are sweatshops all around the world. It's disgusting. And America actually was the first one to abolish slavery. And the problem for me is, I think slavery has obviously held black people back and set them back so far. And in the modern world, in the free market, even people who aren't at a disadvantage, let's say, socioeconomically, still are really up against the system because capitalism at the top, they'll lock it off and it's so hard to get in there, although not impossible. And so what I'm saying is the real issue here is how to, how to kind of re-quantify that without turning someone into a victim and incentivizing welfare and stuff like that. It's a very complex problem. And for me, the current system, I don't think there is a serious structural racist bent to it. I just think the problem is because of slavery, black people had less wealth and so they probably ended up in poorer areas. And then once you're in a poor area, the education there is going to be less. You're going to have more single families. There's going to be more single parent families. There's going to be more welfare and people dependent on the state and stuff. So that's really my issue with it. But And the other thing I want to say is it's, it's fucking sad, but I think slavery has been around since Neolithic periods. It's inseparable from human history. And unfortunately... It's happened in so many countries and there is no version of the world that would have ever played out if you could go back in time and start it all over again where there wouldn't have been slavery. And unfortunately, it happened. But America was first to abolish it. And I just think we need to stop shouting at each other and look at the facts 
and try to be understanding and not so tribal and not fucking have our conversations on Twitter. Well, there we go. So that's the way I wanted to start the show. I talk to my cousin about Black Lives Matter a lot. Man, me and my cousin, we're, can't, we're, we're having great discussions, man. You know, my cousin with his Jamaican heritage, his black heritage, and, and then my Aryan heritage. I'm, I'm half German. He's also half German. And we can kind of come together and talk about it. And I'm starting to realize, right, there might actually be, although a lot of people on the right are caning Black Lives Matter because it has turned into a cult. And I'll get to that later if I can remember. Joe Rogan was talking about it in a fantastic episode recently of the parallels between Black Lives Matter and cultism. In spite of that, there appears to be something there. And while we are all the same underneath, we're just animals, we want to survive, we want to eat, we want to drink, we want to fuck. There are cultural differences. And I just I notice online that the way black people react about this, there's some kind of connection. There's almost like a black connection. And maybe white people can't really understand this so well because when we see something happen to a white person, we don't think, oh, well, they're white, so I'm going to look at it more. But it seems that black people do. And I don't know why that is. But while some people might argue that's maybe to do with the mainstream media kind of dividing us and creating these racial lines and stuff, there, there does appear to be some kind of black community. And some of the black community, while they're affected by what's going on and while they're paying more attention to it than white people for the reasons I've just mentioned, some of them... I think a lot of people on the right need to realize that there are plenty of black people, I'm sure, that are not part of this tribalized nonsense. You saw the guy on Twitter saying black lives matter. The whole, all the people who support that is bullshit. But I can tell, I don't think it is, man. My cousin's not like that. He's very, very diplomatic about it. He sees the left side. He sees the right side. And he kind of stands as an individual and doesn't fall into any kind of group thing, which I really respect. Look at Kanye West. That was really funny. He released a music video. And because The Guardian and all the left-wing publications and websites aren't smart enough to see it, they just saw some references to slavery in his latest video. And then they gave him five stars because they measure things in terms of wokeness, not by quality. The song's actually a bit average, not, not his best. But I saw the song. And at the end of the song, he said, I think he said, slavery, what it does, genocide, what it does. Guardian didn't pick up on that, but the Guardian thinks he's going woke now because he said he's not supporting Trump anymore. But I could just see Kanye West, he's, um, he's much more right-leaning, and he actually has the black community's best interest at heart, I feel. In his song, he said, genocide, what it does, that means he's drawing attention to the fact that the biggest threat to a black man's life is not a cop or a white man, it's another black man in America. 90% of black people murdered in America killed by other black people and Kanye West is drawing attention to that and he's and then he came out and started talking about the number one killer of the black population which is abortion and so the Guardian have kind of egg on their face there and what I'm saying is it you can't lump all people who all black people who 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 support Black Lives Matter into one box and say they're all fucking idiots because that's as bad as the black people who, or any people who look at the murder we talked about earlier of the white person and instantly say, well, that doesn't matter because black lives matter first. Do you see what I'm saying? This is when we descend into tribal nonsense. We just want to be right and we're not thinking logically. So I do think there are a lot of black people out there who do have the black community's interest at heart. What the black community is exactly, I, I don't know how it's structured or it's how it's brought together, whether it's something that's kind of perpetuated by the media, whether it's this intangible kind of thing that you just feel. But the whole thing is very interesting. I'm rambling now. What other news articles do we have today? So, oh man, I love this fucking news. So it's actually kind of bad news, but it's, 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 it's the right thing to do. So let's go over to Washington Examiner. They say Trump denies Minnesota governor's request for 500 million to repair damage from riots. So all these mayors are coming out and saying it's okay to protest and even justifying rioting, breaking of stores, looting, arson, and in some cases killing, allowing that to happen by justifying and validating these riots 
And then later, when the whole city's trashed, they want your tax money to clean it up. No, motherfuckers, don't allow riots to break out in your fucking town and then ask for my money to stop it. I never fucking agreed to that shit. If you had a vote among the people, how many people would vote to say, okay, riot in my town, and then I'll pay for it later? No one's going to do that. So it's great to see Trump disciplining the metaphorical child that is Minnesota. Let's have a little read of this article. President Trump has denied a request from Minnesota's governor for money to rebuild parts of Minneapolis that were destroyed during the riots following the death of George Floyd. The governor is disappointed that the federal government declined his request for financial support, Governor Tim Waltz's office said in a statement. As we navigate one of the most difficult periods in our state's history, we look for support from our federal government to help us through. Yes, a difficult period made more difficult by you validating violent behavior and also helping spread coronavirus. I'm not saying Trump's rallies don't do it either. They do. So look, that's all you need to know. Trump is standing firm against that and it needs to be done. Well, what else is going on today? I got a really, really good meme about Twitter. Why do we even fucking use Twitter? Look at this meme. I love this. It says, get fired from your job in five to 10 years. Join Twitter today. Sign up, log in. Say anything you want. Wait five to ten years. <laughs> Surprise! You're fired. I thought that was a great meme. That's my favorite meme of the week. We should have a meme of the week, shouldn't we? So, finally for today, a little bit of Star Wars shit. A lot of you people who are watching this now are only watching it because you found me when I reviewed Star Wars, this new Star Wars trilogy. Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. It just hurts to even say this shit. And the rise of Soy Woka. And so I'm going to give you a bit more of what you signed up for with some Star Wars news. A bit late to the party, but you might not have heard this. Basically, basically, right? Kathleen Kennedy is the woke feminist who is responsible for the shitty Star Wars trilogy with the feminist bent, which is just saturated with liberal ideology. She sacrificed story, plot, legacy, and dignity of Star Wars to push her own personal brand of politics. The selfish bitch. Well, guess what? She is leaving the Star Wars franchise. Now, the critical drinker, who's one of the best video and movie commentators on YouTube, he did some piece on Kathleen Kennedy a while back. And that guy... He's very articulate, he's funny, he's comedic. He has a great understanding of movies, script writing. And he knows what the fuck is going on in the industry. His videos are just a joy to watch. Critical Drinker, Critical Drinker, fucking amazing. Make sure you check him out there. And if any of you know him, make sure you get him to come over to my minuscule channel by comparison. Um, just don't tell him about all the plagiarism. And he made some really good comments about Kathleen Kennedy. He said she tried to do some really snide political shit when they tried to kick her out of Disney. So I think Bob Iger, who's, who calls the shots, had to get rid of her because she basically fucked up Star Wars. And apparently then she leaked to the press that she was making an all-female something, an all-female Star Wars or something, because she knew that if she said that to the press and then Bob Iger denied it or said, you can't do that, it would look like they're sexist. So she tried to get a parting shot and use her toxic feminism and social justice. Social justice, which is just fascism with a smile. Fascism masquerading as manners. She tried right until the end to spread her toxic woke shit, even trying to fuck with Bob Iger and all that lot. And she's fucking going, mate. She's going. She's going. Yay. So have a look at my screen. This is comic book news. It says... Star Wars Reset includes Kathleen Kennedy stepping down. So it's claimed that Kathleen Kennedy will be stepping down from Lucasfilm to start her own female-centric production company, which follows the rumor that Disney is resetting Star Wars. Details once again come from the future ruler of Earth, Lord Doomcock, from the Overlord DVD YouTube channel. Wow, the internet is fucking weird. The article continues, recall it was Doomcock who revealed that all those Star Wars, the rise of Soy Woker spoilers, and Doomcock even revealed Trouble at Disney with Brie Larson prior to directing and the writing team being let go from the Captain Marvel sequel. So this guy has been right with a lot of his predictions. 
Doom Cock has gone on record stating sources have filled him in that a secret plan is in the works to save Star Wars and involves some sort of Star Wars civil war taking place at Lucasfilm between Kathleen Kennedy and those loyal to George Lucas. Who could have fucking guessed? Because you could pick a random cunt off the street and say, mate, Star Wars is about Luke Skywalker. This guy gets a light skull story, gets it from Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then there's Darth Vader, and that's his Danny says, I'm your father, and then there's the end, and the Ember dies. And then he would make a better Star Wars film than Kathleen Kennedy did. He'd already know more about it and respect it more just from freestyle rapping the whole narrative of Star Wars into his face within 10 seconds. Now, one of the original creators of Star Wars have a beef with Kathleen Kennedy. The article says in Doomcock's previous report, it was stated that Star Wars Reset will involve the erasure of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker through a concept introduced in the Star Wars Rebels animated series, The Veil of the Force. So, look, if they reset Star Wars... Maybe, 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 maybe there's a glimmer of hope. All they fucking have to do is bring back Luke Skywalker as a Jedi Master in the same vein as Obi-Wan in the original Star Wars in the way that he mentored Luke. If you bring Luke Skywalker in... He can have insane powers with very little justification for it because we've already seen old geriatric force masters, Obi-Wan and the Emperor. Luke Skywalker, you cannot not have him in the film. We didn't even see Luke with maximum force powers as a top level elite Jedi master use his fucking powers over three films, over six years. When I could have told you, Kathleen, mate, that's the first fucking thing you write in the cunting script. Oh, mate. You fucking wait, people, for my next Star Wars review. It's going to come at some point. But Kathy Kennedy's gone. They might, according to this doom cock guy. <laughs> um, speaking of cocks, I'm actually completely naked today, which is just fucking awesome. And, um, sorry, don't blame me. That's my ADD. And there might be a reset coming. And if there is, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that Mark Hamill can just come back and all of the characters and we just get the Star Wars film we fucking deserve. Hell, you could even put a female Jedi in there as long as she has a weakness and gets her ass kicked like any character should. Because without weakness and without overcoming things that terrify you, there is no heroism. So that is another rambling episode of the Johnny Massacre Show done and dusted. And I should also point out that that news article that I started off the section with, that is actually going viral around the world. One of my mates, she's only, she's, um, she's Japanese, she's 21, and she even sent me this link from the first news article from today. So it's kind of getting out there. So it's Although it's not covered on the mainstream media websites, it's maybe it's more shared than you think. Anyways, that's about what we've got time for today. I've been Johnny Massacre. And I tell you what, mate, you better be back for the next video. Otherwise, I'll be coming around your house. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because that is what all those other cunts tell you to do. Layers.